This is the worst thing I've ever had to film and it's not even close. So 48 hours ago, Fuji was a happy, healthy gecko and now he's buried in my yard. And I wish it wasn't true, but this is the full story of how it happened. So get cozy. I think all the details are pretty important. So let's just do it. I bought Fuji in September of 2020. He was my reintroduction back into the reptile hobby after taking like six years off. He is so important to me. 2021 was another great year. Fuji started to fill in, his balls dropped. So I knew he was for sure a male. That's very important for this story. 2022 and we have a new character. Enter to Toes. She's got missing toes, she had a wavy tail, and I got her at a discount. But I was fine with that because getting a female that's heavy enough to breed is super expensive. While all this is happening, Fuji and Toes are living healthy, happy lives, completely unaware of each other's existence. But as it's all happening, I have a plan. Breeding reptiles has been a dream of mine for, for my whole, whole life. It's a weird obsession to have when you're eight years old and you have chinchillas and you learn that when chinchillas breed, they like drop like a butt plug and you're like eight years old looking through your chinchillas bedding, looking for a butt plug. You're hyped about breeding animals. And now for the first time in your life, feels like it's kind of about to happen. Now we're in about Christmas time of 2022. So now we're talking just a few months ago at this point. Santa came, I strangled him in my living room. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't do that to Santa. Now, here we go, I said when I get back from seeing my parents, these two are getting paired up. Now it is February of 2023. I give them one more way. Fuji is 48 grams. Toes was 53 grams. Oh la la, what a match. And I was so excited, right? I had their honeymoon suite. I had this just like big, big container with tons of visual barriers, her lay box, fake plants, everything. This was gonna be, wow, the mood was set. I put them on opposite ends of the enclosure. The vibes were at an all time high on leafy street. And then from there, it was all downhill. I woke up the next morning when I saw Fuji, I knew something was wrong. He had a smile on his face, which he is physically incapable of not doing but his hemipene was hanging out of his body. Reptiles have two squishy, wet, internal penises that they use, hopefully, and then geckos will lick them and then they put them back in. One of Fuji's hemipenes was still out. Uh, hey man, that's not good. So immediately I take action. I go to the pharmacy, I buy Q-tips, sugar, and KY lubricant. I can tell you with 100% certainty that this at first was a nerve wracking video but it was gonna be funny. It was supposed to be kind of silly. Pen penis rescue. I grabbed Fuji. I made a sugar water solution. And I'll explain that in a second. I made a sugar water solution. I prepared him like a sterile quarantine and I took the lube and a Q-tip and I worked it around his hemipene and gently just tried to kind of push it back into place. Not trying to like force it, just see if I can help coax it in. But the problem was the hemipene was out and then his vent hinged behind it. So it was like this bulb of like fleshy hemipene that was stuck out of his body. And the worst part was I would not get it in. As all this is happening, I put him in his quarantine tub and I got an email back from the breeder. And she said, oh man, this just happened to one of my males. No need to panic. Here's what I did. She said she put him in a much higher concentration sugar bath, just sugar and water, which creates a hyperosmotic solution. The idea is that the sugar will draw water from the hemipenes, it'll reduce swelling, and they'll just kind of pop back into place. So I took him out of that quarantine, soaked him in that bath, and then even overnight, I put him in a much smaller, like kind of an ICU setup with a heat pad set to 82 on one side, a hide, and then the substrate was completely paper towel sprayed with sugar water. Leave him overnight. If it's not fixed overnight, take him to the vet. They'll be able to help you, no problem. I woke up the next morning optimistic and it was so much worse. Immediately called the vet. They got me in for their last emergency appointment of the day. It's gonna be a few hours of wait but just bring him in. And then it was just me. And as time went on, I got worse and worse. I was thinking about him in his bin, in pain and scared to be there. And my mind was starting to race and uh, it was not fun. As we hit hour two, hour three, then hour four, they shut down for lunch and I had to leave. Left and tried to unwind the only way I know how, uh, up at a little plant store. There was a few surgeries before him that were not emergency surgeries. I don't know how it works. I was just grateful they even took me that day. And at this point, I'm not mad, but I'm very nervous. Then I heard my name. Well, his name, because <laughs> they call you by 
<laughs> your pet's name at the vet. And there is a, a, a big tube of lube and a big old Q-tip on the counter. And I said, it's not for me. I bet that's for Fuji. They brought Fuji in in his little container. I was so excited. He was fine. He was fine. We're not over the hill yet, right? The vet comes in and says, yeah, so he has a prolapsed hemipene and he's gonna try his best to pop it back in. Brought a nurse in. She she held Fuji like, like this and he was, for the first time, the most chill gecko I've ever seen in my entire life was biting, was had his mouth open, he was clicking and croaking and he wasn't happy, obviously, but it needed to be done. The vet said, if I can't get this in in like 30 more seconds, we're taking him into surgery. And 30 seconds goes by and Fuji needs to be put under. The vet explained that it would just be easier to anesthetize him and pop it back in that way. He would completely loosen up, his muscles would totally relax and should be a seamless process. I had to sign like a CPR consent form and all these waivers to basically give the go to give anesthesia to a, a gecko that's this big. They rushed him away. I said bye to him. These are professionals with decades of experience. This is gonna be fine. An hour later, I get a call. I picked up and I said, hey, how you doing? And the vet said, not so good. Are you close by? Can you come back? I got called right in, right into the office and uh, they came out without him. And he said the procedure to pop his hemipene back in and stitch it shut was successful, but his heart stopped and uh, he didn't make it. The surgery was successful, I guess. I mean, this is, I'm gonna blur it out because I'm not sure what I'm allowed to show, but you can use your imagination. This is sensitive content. He had a little stitch to prove it. His hemipenes were put back in place and he was stitched shut. Um, but there was complications related to the anesthesia and he just didn't come out of it. I made the choice to bury him in my yard. I took a piece of cork from his enclosure in one of his alocasia, one of his leaves that he liked to hide under. And I put it inside of a fruit fly culture container. <clears throat> And I duct taped it shut because I don't want anything to eat him. And I dug a hole and I buried him. Somehow there's good news, or at least a silver lining to all this. Fuji was paired up to breed and he spent a full night with toes. There is a chance, there's at least a chance that despite the fact that he broke his penis and then died, there is a chance that he got the job done and that Toes will be gravid with Fuji's babies and he'll live on through those little, those little baby geckos. Gonna be positive and just hope that he did. And that's about all you can do sometimes, is just hope for the best. Cause what choice do we really have?